In the realm of botanical wonders, where vibrant blooms and lush foliage entice us with their beauty, lies a shadowy corner inhabited by some of nature's most enigmatic and dangerous residents. Welcome back to the realm of poisonous plants, where today we will discuss four more alluring yet perilous specimens, the ethereal angel's trumpet, the enigmatic pong pong tree, the seemingly innocuous castor bean, and the beautiful foxglove. These captivating botanical treasures captivate our senses with their intriguing allure and often haunting aesthetics. But beneath their mesmerizing exterior lurks a hidden danger that demands respect and caution. In my last video, The Deadliest Plants on Earth, we discussed monkshood, hemlock, and belladonna. Today, we start with another plant that also contains atropine. The beautiful angel's trumpet with its large trumpet-shaped flowers contains potent tropane alkaloids, including, okay, I'm really going to try hard to pronounce this correctly, scopolamine and atropine. Ingesting any part of the plant can lead to hallucinations, rapid heartbeat, dilated pupils, dry mouth, confusion, and even paralysis. It's important to note that the plant's intoxicating effects have also made it a target for use as an illicit drug. Scopolamine, a chemical in Angel's Trumpet, is specifically named Devil's Breath because it's been used by criminals to incapacitate their victims. How creepy is that? This plant was used in India to execute criminals. Ironic that its name alone evokes a celestial enchantment, and indeed this ornamental plant, native to South America, has a long-standing association with ethereal realms. It is commonly grown in tropical and subtropical regions such as South America, Central America, and parts of Asia. It can also be found in some areas of the United States, including Florida, California, and Hawaii. In some areas, this plant is also considered invasive. Native to India and Southeast Asia, the pong pong tree is one of the deadliest plants known to humankind. Its seeds contain potent cardiac glycosides, particularly cerberin, which disrupt the normal functioning of the heart. Ingesting even a single seed can cause fatal arrhythmias, leading to cardiac arrest. This tree is not typically found in the U.S., but it's native to India and Singapore and can be found in Costa Rica to Colombia. Thankfully, only the seeds are poisonous and each tree only flowers and fruits once in its lifetime. This would be the perfect time for me to talk about oleander because the pong pong tree is closely related to the oleander. The oleander is another widely available, beautiful, but poisonous plant, which I talked about in my last video, The Most Dangerous Plants, Part 2. I'll link that video here and in the comments. If you haven't already seen it, I would love for you to check it out. The castor bean is a fast-growing tropical tree or shrub related to the poinsettia. It's native to Eastern Africa, but has now naturalized to many warm regions around the world and can be found in most of the states of the United States, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Its flowers are small, greenish-yellow, or reddish in color and are found in clusters on long spikes. The tree produces spiky fruits that contain large, shiny seeds that are poisonous if ingested. The toxin contained within these seeds of the castor bean is called ricin, which is one of the most fatal poisons that occurs in nature. It's 12,000 times more poisonous than rattlesnake venom. It's deadly for humans, pets, livestock, and wildlife. Many people choose to grow this tree despite the toxicity of its seeds. The rest of the plant is safe to interact with. It is also said that the skin of the seeds is quite thick, and unless it's well ground or chewed, it would be difficult to accidentally come in contact with the poison of the seeds. Of course, if you have children or pets, I would avoid this tree, or at a minimum, prevent it from setting seeds by removing the flowers. There's a danger for children and pets alike, as the seed pods are often as showy as the flowers and look innocuous. 
Surprisingly, there's no toxin present in the oil derived from the tree, making castor oil safe for many medicinal purposes. Isn't it fascinating how so many of these plants can kill, but when used properly, they can also save us from disease? I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have any experience with these plants? Tell me in the comments below if you do. And if there's a plant you'd like to hear me discuss in another video, let me know that too. I have experience growing the next plant that I'm going to talk about, although it was a long time ago, back before I had kids. And if you haven't grown it, you've definitely seen it at a nursery. Native to Europe, foxglove has woven its way into the fabric of folklore and cultural traditions. In various myths and legends, it's often associated with fairies and magical beings, believed to possess both protective and sinister powers. Its name itself is said to come from the term folks glove, as it was believed that fairies would wear the flowers as gloves to protect themselves from human touch. Beyond its mythical associations, foxglove has also played a significant role in the history of medicine. In the 18th century, its medicinal properties were discovered, and it became a staple in traditional herbal medicine. The leaves of foxglove contain potent compounds called digitalis glycosides, which have a profound impact on the heart. These glycosides, particularly digoxin and digitoxin, have been utilized in modern medicine to treat various cardiac conditions, including heart failure and certain arrhythmias. The controlled use of foxglove derivatives has undoubtedly saved numerous lives, highlighting the remarkable therapeutic potential that lies within this seemingly unassuming plant. However, it's essential to acknowledge the fine line between medicinal use and toxicity when it comes to foxglove. The same cardiac glycosides that make it a valuable medicinal plant can also be deadly if consumed in excessive amounts. It's this precarious balance between healing and danger that serves as a reminder of the respect and caution required when interacting with nature's medicinal gifts. As I mentioned before, many gardeners choose to grow these plants even though they're toxic. I don't make videos to persuade you not to grow a plant. I see many of these plants at my local nurseries and I worry because there's often no warning specifying the toxicity of the plant. Truthfully, if you're not going to eat the plant, then it's likely not going to harm you, but you may want to wear protective gear when handling the plant. However, if you have curious children or pets, you should be aware that these plants could pose a danger especially if you have a puppy, because in my experience, they will chew on anything and everything. In the tapestry of poisonous plants, angel's trumpet, pong pong, castor bean, and foxglove stand as a testament to the intricate interplay between folklore, medicinal knowledge, and the awe-inspiring power of nature. Their ethereal beauty combined with historical significance and medicinal potential serve as a vivid reminder of the rich complexity that lies within the botanical world. From the realms of myth and legend to the realms of healing and modern medicine, these plants continue to cast an enchanting spell, enticing us to explore their mysteries while respecting their potent nature. Thanks for watching today. This is a new channel, so it would really help me grow if you would like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day!